Today I'm going to be sharing with you a fantastic hike out here in Scottsdale, Arizona, just north of Phoenix. And I'm also going to be sharing with you a very cool piece of equipment called the ultralight backpack ventilation frame that actually helped keep my back cool and dry along this hike in very, very sunny weather out here in Phoenix. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Brees, the president of Vocluse, where we love to sweat less and also love to explore more. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a great hike that you can do out here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I'm going to be sharing a piece of equipment that really helped me in the warm and sunny weather of Scottsdale. Let's dive in and I'll show you where I went. Okay, let's look at the map. I've got uh, my all trails, which I'm going to share with you and also just some screenshots of the, um, the maps that are available from the Scottsdale, Arizona government website. So I hiked the Reach 11 Recreational Area Trail out here in the northern Scottsdale. Scottsdale is a northeast suburb of Phoenix, Arizona. It actually has a lot of outdoor activities. A lot of people can assume that Scottsdale, all it's known for is pretty much spring baseball and golf. Well, there's a lot of outdoor activities, primarily because Scottsdale is home to a 44,000 acre preserve called the McDowell Sonoran Preserve. It's a permanently protected, sustainable desert habitat. And if you're in Scottsdale, you literally can reach this um, preserve within probably 15 minutes and you've got a lot of space to go hiking. The trailhead was at the intersection of Scottsdale Road and Princess Road across the street from the Audi dealership. So I didn't go to the preserve, I just stayed inside of Scottsdale. And um, there are several short and long trails that intersect here. Uh, the main one I took was called the Ring Tail Loop. And it follows the Arizona can Canal. The can this canal is uh, over 50 miles long and over 100 years old. And what's really cool is that there's a lot of trails to the, to the north and to the south, at least where I'm from. It, the canal curves, but th there's plenty of stuff to do around the canal, which is great. So regardless of where you live in Scottsdale, more than likely the canal is near you. The hike, it was, very, it was a lot of fun. It was flat and you get some tree protection from the sun. A total length of, uh, length of the hike was just over five miles. The elevation gain was 59 feet. So flat, 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 fantastic, very easy. And the total time was just under two hours. Now let's dive into some of the gear that I took. I took with me just a very simple day pack. Here I have my Osprey um, 18 liter pack and I equipped it with a ventilation frame and a GoV Bluetooth thermometer so I could track my humidity and my uh, temperature of my back. Here is the ventilation frame. It uh, attaches in seconds to any backpack. I attached it to a day pack. You can attach it to your backpack, whether it's a day pack, um, it's a 30 liter, 40, 55, or even 65 liter. This attaches within seconds. It weighs 3.5, 3.4 to 3.5 ounces. So super light. And if you know um, frames on backpacks, um, they can either get quite heavy if you really want to keep that space between you and your backpack, um, or they're very light and very flimsy. And when you have them and you have a lot of weight and you really attach it, that, that curve or that gap really collapses and you don't really have any uh, relief or any airflow going between you and the back. So let's look at the numbers that the GoV Bluetooth thermometer took and see how this frame performed out in Scottsdale on my hike. So first we're going to look at the outside temperature. The temperature was 76 degrees and it gradually increased to 78 degrees. So not too hot, but for uh, a two hour hike in the sun, it can definitely get pretty warm. Uh, second, let's look at the humidity on my backpack. As I mentioned, I attached a thermometer, but it also tracks humidity and the humidity hovered around 30% and spiked over 40% just a few times. This means my back was pretty dry because the humidity was so low on my back. Third, let's look at the temperature 
on my back. So there was a gradual increase in my back temperature. Uh, the temperature hovered around 82 degrees, uh, just a few uh, above the outside temperature. So this isn't, this isn't bad for having a two hour hike in the sun. I mean, that's pretty good. So when you don't have a backpack ventilation frame, when you don't have this on you, and I've got a few videos that show compare and contrast when you have it and when you don't, uh, the temperature in your back can actually increase over 10 degrees. And if you think about the hike that I was on at 78 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, that gets up to 88 degrees, possibly 89. And actually the temperature just starts increasing, increasing and increasing. And that's where you cause discomfort. You're obviously sweating and there are all obviously risks involved in getting so hot. You have dehydration and heat exhaustion. So if you want to increase your backpack's ventilation system and you want to find a, a solution that's light and very practical and you can use on your favorite backpack, do check out uh, our website at vocluesgear.com. Check out our ultralight backpack ventilation frame. I think you're really going to like it and you're going to enjoy hiking out on those trails, whether in cold weather or hot, with this frame on your backpack. Thank you so much to Sweating Less and see you on the trails.